Hi, welcome. My name is Rich Bassini. Today is June 12, 2020. Thank you for tuning in. I just want to start off by saying thank you to all the new subscribers who recently subscribed to my channel. It is greatly appreciated. Hope you like the content and come back for more. Today, it's going to be a little longer than usual with the video, folks. I hope you could hang around you know, and check it out. What I want to talk about today is uh, refunding a buyer through you know, an, eBay, an eBay return, uh, paying through PayPal and refunding through PayPal. And I also want to talk about trends and I want to talk about voice marketing radio. For those who are not familiar with it, that was a, a radio broadcast that was that came back a while. That started back a while back. I don't know when exactly uh, eBay Radio started, but it goes and it goes under voice marketing radio. I'm going to take you to that website there and show you how you can listen to the old archives from 2016 and so on and so forth. I should say um, it's like the eBay podcast, but this was with Griff. Uh, if you know, for those who don't know, Jim Griffith, he works for eBay, he still does. He does the eBay for podcast. But the eBay for radio, or I should say eBay radio, was with Lee Maribel, who was his co-host. Um, and they start, you know, they, they would uh, do the show together. You had two shows that came out um, Tuesdays, I think Thursdays. And uh, one was the eBay radio. <clears throat> and then they had another one, another segment, which would be called the Ask uh, Griffin Lee segment. Really good information. I got a lot. I learned a lot from them. And as I always say in my videos, I always keep a pen and pair with me just to jot down notes very quick. I know people say you could always just play back the video and you could, you know, learn it that way. But, you know, or pick up where you left off. But I always like to keep a pen and pair with me because I like to jot down notes when I, you know, this way I have something to refer to. But anyway, what I want to talk about today is uh, for those of you out there who are thinking about selling on eBay or, you know, if you're contemplating selling on eBay, uh, I've been on eBay for over 20 years. And um, I love it. I love I love selling on eBay and stuff like that. Um, it's been pretty good. I got more into it uh, since I lost my job back in June of 2016. I got a layoff, and I've been doing it ever since. You know, it's been like a hobby for me. And uh, but now, it kind of like turned into kind of like grandfathered into uh, a full time gig along with YouTube. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I've been on YouTube since. July of 2013 and eBay July of 1999 both July right um, but anyway with that aside um, I printed out some papers here I normally don't do this here it's a waste of paper actually it's kind of like a waste of my time but you know what I want to share this information with you guys all right and it's in regard to um, this item <clears throat> it's uh, I'm gonna take you to that website there but it's in regard to I have to put my glass on because I do re use glass for reading uh, is for the Ryobi 18 inch outdoor cordless hedge trimmer. Now, this item, matter of fact, I'll take you to the website there and then we're going to come. Well, actually, I'll show you in a little bit. The buyer, it starts off, he, he con this buyer contacted me, messaged me, I should say, eight times. Eight times the buyer had messaged me. And I had to write down, so if I'm a little out of sequence, I apologize. Um, but he messaged me eight times. Um, I might have missed it, maybe one or two or whatever, but it was quite, as far as I count, it was eight. He sends back, let's start right from the beginning. I, I know, I hope you guys don't mind here. Um, the first one was, eBay tells me you have a buyer that wants to return the Ryobi 18-inch uh, outdoor cordless hedge trimmer. It was, the item was purchased May 28th. It was delivered June 5th, and it was return started was June 5th. June 6th, the item was reshipped. Uh, was item was shipped, and June 11th, the item was delivered. Reasons is doesn't work or defective. Now, um, if I take you to the uh, site, I still have it up there, which I do, which I will do that right now. I'm going to go over there really quick. I'm going to bump into this, and let's go right over. I know I got a lot of windows open at the bottom here. Uh, here we go. This is the item right here. I had it listed for $29.99, and <clears throat> you might say, well, did you know it didn't work? I didn't know because it's been laying around. It was given to me. I was told by the person was laying around. They wasn't sure if the battery was good or wasn't good. So it was given to me, and uh, I put over here really quick uh, just to share this with you. It says, hi, and welcome to my auction this week. I'm offering this pre owned Ryobi 18-inch outdoor cordless hitch trimmer and blah, the, blah, the model and so on and so forth. So I wrote over here, the oil condition is nice and clean, which it is. Uh, it says, please note there's no original packaging or user include uh, user manual included with this item. It does not come with a battery 
it does not come with the battery charger and the, ba and the battery that comes with it it's been sitting around for a while so therefore I am not sure if it's good or not it may have to be replaced if it doesn't work I'm not you know and if it doesn't yeah and if it doesn't work I'm not sure it will hold if it does no I'm sorry and if it does work uh, I'm not sure it will hold the charge if it does I don't know how long it will last so please keep that in mind prior to the purchase now I want to I want to share something with you guys really quick here um, this is the uh, item we're talking about right here. If I can move my mouse cursor, my computer's been acting up. Right over here, this is what we're talking about. Okay, this is the item. All right. Pretty clean. Okay. Um, he claims it doesn't work. Now, the funny thing about this here, really quick, I messaged him after I got the message back that, you know, he said it doesn't work. Um, I messaged him, and I said over here, where's the one that says me, uh, hi. Could you tell me if, the, if, the, if you had to charge, if you had charged the battery or replaced it with a new one? I would like to know. Now, you would think, you know, he would, he or she would respond back and say, hey, listen, you know, I, I did replace the battery. I did charge, you know, I did check it out. didn't work or whatever. Or I put a new battery in and it, didn't, it still didn't work, whatever. I never got a message back from the buyer, okay? Um, so that's where I am with this thing so right now the way it seems I'm not gonna invest money in a battery in it and I'm not gonna you know go, go, you know go any further than that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna relist this for parts not working and at least try to get back uh, because I took a loss on it the shipping cost was um, the shipping cost was uh, almost 1187 okay so I'm going to try to sell it for that there. I'm going to put it in for that. I'm going to be firm on the price. I'm not going to put a best offer because I figure if you could buy it alone, uh, you know, you can get you could take the uh, cover if you need it. The cover I'm sure is worth a, a decent buck. And if it's a person that has one of these here, um, you might want to use the blade. The blade's pretty clean. Everything's pretty clean on it. The unit itself is a pretty clean unit, to be honest with you. So I don't know. And I'm going to share this with you guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me go back over here to open this window up. Um, the way I got it back, to be honest with you folks, before I read more into this, yeah, um, it looked like he never even took the, the wrapping off. Now, what I want to share, the reason I'm doing this video, and the reason I want to share with you guys is for the simple reason is you are going to have what they call buyer's remorse. Okay, If you've been selling on eBay as long as I have, you're going to come across things like that. I had buyers where they tried to... Um, bait you into lowering the price down. I had one, I sold a, a Keurig coffee maker, I think it was the model K10. I sold, I sold quite a few coffee um, Keurigs. The person says, message me, I would like to send this back because I've seen it cheaper elsewhere. That was the first message. And then the second message was, um, I could find, I got one cheaper, or I could find one cheaper, something like that. And I think the logic behind my idea, my thinking, is that the buyer wanted to see if I was going to, you know, make a better offer. So let's say they said, okay, now let's say I fell into that little trap. I call it a trap, right? I shouldn't maybe not shouldn't say it that way, but, and I said, okay, um, what did you find it for? And the person, the person might have said, well, I found it for ten dollars or fifteen dollars. Now, mind you, I took a best offer. <clears throat> the item was selling for, I think. Twenty nine ninety nine or something like that, and I said to myself, <clears throat> excuse me, and I said to myself, wait a minute. Now, if I fall into that, and I said, okay, well, let's say they really didn't, and I fell into it, and I said, okay, let me, um, let me, let me, how about I offer you fifteen bucks? You know, I, I, I didn't, I didn't counter, and I wasn't about to counter because I had an idea what was going on here. That's the first time in all the years I sold on eBay, I got something like that. And I'm sure the people out there who've been selling it might say, well, I had the idea. I got, used to get plenty of those all the time. People always, uh, you know, trying to uh, talk you down in price and stuff like that. They throw out that, you know, just like, it's like throwing a little bait out and see if they catch a big fish. And um, I didn't fall for it. So I messaged back. I said, okay, if you could find it cheaper, please send it back. Never came back to me. Never came back. Didn't even open up a, a return receipt, a return request. So, right there, that made me think the buyer was just trying to get the item a lot cheaper. See if I'd go along and say, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a partial refund. You keep the other thing. I, I can't do that, folks. I don't get these things that cheap. So, for me, I can't afford to, you know, take a loss like that. But anyway, <clears throat> let's get back to this again with this guy here. Eight times he messaged me. Eight. Okay. Who's keeping count? All right. So, I get it back the 11th. Today's the 12th, and I refund them. 
I go to PayPal, and here's the thing I want to share with PayPal really quick. PayPal, because they have this alliance, well, it's I'm not saying it's a broken alliance, but I think it's going PayPal is going to still be available on eBay or e, or, or, or used as an alternative according to what the uh, what do you call it there? Uh, PayPal representative told me. He said, "Well, we're going to be. I think we're going to be. You're going to still be able to use it till 2023." I said, "Well, that's that's a little peace of mind because I said I love PayPal." I think PayPal is a great service. I like the customer service. I like even eBay. I love the customer service reps. They've always been good by me. They always did good. All right. And um, so I talked to him about this. I said, look, here's what I, here's what I do. And I'm, I'm sharing with you guys out there. When I get paid from a buyer from eBay and makes a purchase through PayPal, when the money goes into my PayPal account, and this is how I operate. This is the, this is the gospel truth. I'm telling you the truth. I take that money, I transfer, I do the standard transfer fee, you know, standard transfer where it's, you know, it's for free. Because if you want it to go one day service or whatever, expect, they charge you for that. So I just, I don't need it. Because basically it's a one to two day thing. And if I get a payment, if I get a listing today, and I, I mean, I make the payment, I transfer it over, the next day it's in my bank. So I'm not worried about it. I don't need to pay an additional thing. So anyway, I use the standard free, uh, free thing, their transfer. My account has zero in it. If you look at my, my mom's gonna show my balance, but it's a zero balance I'm in my PayPal account. So, in the past, before all this stuff was going on with the uh, the alliance, they're breaking up with PayPal or whatever is you know because I know eBay's got that managed payment service they want to implement. I I don't know if it's gonna be a mandatory thing. If it is, I'm not gonna be a happy camper. I don't want. I don't really like it. I love PayPal. PayPal. I print out my transaction detail sheet. Uh, that's what I got over here. Okay, and I love it. It keeps records, and then when like, tax time comes around, I print it out for the fiscal year. It shows you how much money I made or whatever. So I use that. I love PayPal for that. I'm sure the managed payment service is going to have something similar to that. I didn't really look into it, so I don't really want to, you know, make any derogative statements right now about that. There, I'm sure the managed payment system is going to work great. I'm sure it's going to be great. I don't know. I don't know. It's all new. It's all new to me. I'm not into it. I didn't opt into it. So anyway, he tells me. I said, look, I want to pay this buyer. I said, I owe the buyer $33.78. I said, when every time I try to issue a refund, I get this message that there's no funds in my account. He said, well, there's a work around that. He said, for some, this is what his words were. eBay has blocked the, the bank or something like that along the line like that. So in other words, it, it has something to do. There's like a, a little conflict there between eBay and PayPal, something with the bank. He said the bank, he goes, eBay block the bank or something like that. I don't know how because I told him I said I already updated my bank. I'm with the credit union anyway. I said I already updated at that show. There should be no problem with that. He said, well this is what he told me. So anyway, he goes, I know it's an inconvenience because in the past when I have an issue refund and I got very rarely I got refund uh, returns. But when I did, um, I would just go in there, go into PayPal, look up the uh, buyer, issue a refund, boom, it was done. Now because of it's a little inconsistent uh, you know, problem here within within the uh, the, pay the payment. Um, I had to call up uh, PayPal, and you do get a rep, and very very nice rep. He helped me out with it big time, and um, he said there's a work around that. He goes, um, we, you know, he didn't tell. I thought I had to do the work around. He actually did it for me. I said, okay, can you teach me how you know sh you know the work around? He goes, it's already done. I said, really. So he goes, yeah, if you look at you refresh your screen, you'll see that it's the transaction's been done. And it has been. I got the transaction detail right over here. And um, <clears throat> it shows that the buyer was paid. June 11, the thing came in June 11. The buyer was paid June 11. So now here's where the fun begins. Okay. So I messaged by, <clears throat> I issued a refund. <clears throat> the buyer writes back. The first is the first message. Not quite sure I understand. I paid nearly $32 for an item that doesn't work. Okay? The ad clearly states free returns, which I do. I offer free returns on it. I return the item and I get less than $2 back. Explain that. <clears throat> so I wrote back to him the difference comes from the taxes you paid. I called, e I, called um, I have called PayPal and requested the full amount for you, no, to you, you might want to contact eBay regarding the amount. That has nothing to do with me. I have issued you a full refund. Now, 
buyers in some cases this is probably the first time this happened to me that's why i'm sharing with you guys you might say what's a big deal making it big, you know you make it sound like you're making a big deal i'm not making a big deal i'm just sharing this with you guys out there and just giving you a little heads up that's basically what it is a heads up um they think in some cases you don't have to pay taxes now i have seen where some states or certain things there is no they'll say no taxes but i don't know how that's working out because as far as i know i guess i guess until all the states jump aboard with this tax thing this guy has to pay tax. Person is located in uh, Michigan, I believe. And um, the tax is, uh, says right on the transaction detail. Right here. I got the paper right here. I printed it out on all the items I sell. Taxes collected by eBay, $1.91. Sales tax, $1.91. PayPal fee, $1.28. Net amount, $30.59. So, he's going back and forth. Then he sends me one another one. Then he sends me another one here. Um, then I told him, I said, the difference is that has nothing to do with me. So then, he messaged me back here. <laughs> I, gotta keep, I might be out of sync here with these here, but I'm sorry. So then he messaged me back. Um, I got only a dollar. He goes, I only got a dollar refund. <laughs> I got a refund of a dollar ninety one talking about I said what are you talking about you know so I go so then I go here uh, are you going to give me my money back I got that message about three or four times so I wrote over here here's a copy of the check uh, you know, here's a copy please check the date it was processed today see the photo below I made a copy of the um, the transaction detail sheet which I keep it stapled with the refund with the transaction detail there's two of them there's one for refund issue a refund so he sends it back another one are you going to pay my money are you going to give my money back so i go i messaged him back and i said did you check the did you check the message i said did you check it over there i said you know that's why i told him i said did you check the uh the other uh, email all right i don't know i think i'm going out of sync here so um yeah and then he says again are you going to pay me back or whatever so on so I told him, and then the next one I said, yeah, and then the next one I wrote, did you see the PayPal transaction? And he messaged back. I, at that point, he didn't message back. So now I'm a little, I'm not steamed, but I'm a little annoyed. So after I did that one there, I said, did you see the PayPal transaction? I think I did get another one after that. He says, well, all I got is, I think he sent, the same, he sent me the same message. I only got a refund of $1.91. You're going to pay my money. You're going to get my money back. That's when I wrote back to him. So I said, it was going back and forth. This crazy stuff. And this, this was the most craziest one. I have it. I have it. And not only that, I wasted paper doing this here, but I want to share it with you guys. So, um, yeah, I go like this. And this one here, I go. Uh, here's the other one I wrote him then. I said, I'm sorry, I have paid you in full, pay, I paid you in full through PayPal for the, for the amount of $33.78. That's the full amount. And I said, uh, you can contact them as well. I don't know what else to tell you. I have a copy of the transaction. I will send you a copy. Please stand by while I pull up the information for you. Okay? That's when, that's, and then that's when I said, did you see the PayPal transaction? I sent it, and then that's what we got. So the last thing I said to him is we're going back and forth with this here. Did you see the photo? I have sent you, or I sent it, I sent it. It's all there. Sometimes it takes a while for it to show up in your account. It may take a couple of days. I had the refunds to pay. I had the funds to pay you. I've been on, I, that's what I told them. I've been on eBay for over 20 years, and rest assured, I always honor a buyer's request when it comes to refunds. Please do not worry. You're going to get your money back. In regards to the taxes, that is an eBay issue. They collect the taxes, not me. Last but not least, eBay acknowledges it and says, thank you for a refund, the buyer. Hi, Richard. We, uh, you have issued a $31.87. That's what it comes out to with the fees and the tax uh, for the outdoor Roby, whatever, uh, hedge trimmer. We will credit you your value fee. Uh, value, yeah, we'll credit your final value fee back to your invoice. Uh, we'll also refund the appropriate tax back due to the buyer. Okay, eBay takes care of that, folks. So, if the reason why I'm bringing this to your attention, you might say, "Wow, um, a lot of paper wasted too." To be honest with you, <laughs> I mean, I'm wasting about maybe eight, ten sheets here, going back and forth. 
Um, the reason why I'm sharing it with you guys is because you're going to come across this here. And there, I think there are a lot of, I'm not saying for sure, but I think there are some buyers out there that still think uh, you're buying stuff tax-free. Now, there may be people, maybe the, maybe the states that didn't jump on board still have that there. I live in New York, okay? Um, you know, if people, if New, New York residents buy from me, they're going to be paying sales tax. And I, I've gotten quite a few, new, you know, quite a few uh, people that live in New York. You know, there's no qualm with it, though. But this parent, apparently this buyer either was fairly new or didn't know the system, how it worked. Uh, they're wondering why ain't they getting a whole amount of money. I have nothing to do with that. That's the taxes. you got to pay the taxes, folks. What can I tell you, right? And it says it right here on the transaction detail. Taxes are collected by eBay. So I sent them the transaction detail. And the transaction detail states it right there. gives you the date. tells you the money where it's going to. Taxes collect the reversal. When you print that or when you send an issue, you know, when you send it back, PayPal reversal fee, and they're giving you the money back for that there. Okay? Um, so basically, I told the guy, I don't know what you want me to do. Uh, after I sent that last one, though, um, <clears throat> uh, I didn't get anything back from him. So I, I'm assuming he's a happy camper. Okay? I, I, like I said, folks, I've been on eBay for over 20 years. Uh, for pe if you read my feedbacks, and, I, and I'll tell you right now, just not to throw a segue into it, but I'll tell you right now, if you guys see anything I have, I don't, I'm a small time, I'm a small volume seller here, by the way. I don't have a lot of things. I think I want to have 100 and something, 114 items, whatever listed on eBay. Um, I'm not a high volume seller, but I do give my buyers the best service possible. Well, I would say the best service possible, whenever possible, always, always possible. I always, I always give you guys the best service. Um, I'm not leading it to a segue either. But if you do ever decide or you, you hit my listings on eBay, before you buy, and I said this in my, many times in my other videos as well, if you do buy or want to buy something, think about buying something, read my feedbacks first and then let that be your decision, okay? I will work with you the best I can, okay? There are certain things I offer at best offers and there might be some things that I don't offer you offer because the price is so low a matter of fact, I got a little speaker. It's for four ninety nine, and I got best offer. I should just take that out and leave it at four ninety nine. But you know, I try to get, I try to do the best by my buyers. I try to give you guys the best service as possible. Um, read my feedbacks; it'll tell you right there. Okay, right now it's at one hundred percent top rated seller. You know, uh, also not only top rated seller plus, I'm also a power seller as well. I, I got that status back again after uh, I didn't meet the last threshold for last year. So this year they. I guess I did a few sales that brought me up to meet that threshold, and you know, you become you become become a power seller again. Not that it makes a big deal between top rated seller and a power seller. Um, I think the only thing with the power seller is my personal take is that you met the threshold. So if you made an X amount of thousands of dollars for the year, you're you consider power seller bronze. That's the small that's the smallest one you can go with. Um, I think if you're a titanium, I think titanium is like the highest you can go. I think on eBay, and I think you got to do like. 150,000 a month, something ridiculous like that. I think I talked about once before in my other videos. But anyway, I just wanted to share that with you guys out there really quick. Um, in regards to with PayPal, <clears throat> let me just recap that really quick because I, I think I let that detail out. He told me that and uh, whenever these things happen, which I hope they don't, um, we get a return. He said you could do one or two things. You could leave the money in there. Just we have to worry about. We have to worry about it. Or you're gonna have to keep calling up. And they will take care of it on their end. All right. Now, as I said, I, I don't know if I told you to see it, but when the money goes in my my bank, uh, my PayPal account, I transfer it over to my bank because I use that there to pay. I pay my bills from my my personal bank. I don't use PayPal to pay my bills. That's what I do. He even agreed. He goes, I do the same thing. He's a seller too. <clears throat> so he said the same thing. He goes, when I make a sale, he goes, the money goes to my PayPal account. He goes, I transfer it over to my bank because I pay my bills there. He has a full time job. But, you know, for people who do this on a full-time basis, when you get them, at least I do, when I get the money in my PayPal account, transfer it over, and I, and I, and I pay my bills with it, okay? Right now, it's kind of slow, to be honest with you. Um, did this hurt? Absolutely, you know. Uh, it's costing me, because uh, I have to pay the return, I'm paying the return uh, shipping, um, $11.87. I'm eating that up. And right now, with the way eBay is kind of like semi-slow for me, like I said, I'm a small volume seller, that kind of hurts. You might say, well, eleven eighty dollars, eleven dollars. Well, rather, let's say twelve bucks. You gonna say that really bothers you? Yeah, it does. Um, to me, I, it does because I'm a very frugal and conservative spender, and I could use that money to put gas in my car or whatever. 
uh, you know, I got a prepaid account. I could use that there to, to pay that, put $10 on my, my account there, you know, my, my uh, prepaid phone service. So it does come in handy for certain things like that. And, you know, especially if uh, sales are slow, um, you know, that hurts. It really does hurt. I, like I said, thank God I don't get that many uh, returns. Okay, uh, my return rate is not that big. Not you know, it's pretty good to be honest. But I don't get that many returns. Uh, but for the most part, um, you know, it, it does it does hurt when you gotta you know, especially if you're doing with the free returns there and you gotta pay in the shipping. Now for certain things that are expensive, I just want to share this with you guys. You may want to think twice about it. If you're selling an item that's going to cost you twenty or thirty dollars in shipping, you might want to think twice about it or put in there. Buy it pays return shipping. However, however, that may make you lose a sale. It depends how bad the buyer wants it. Okay, but that's why I say when it comes to selling on eBay, you know, be very descriptive in your in your uh, description there. You know, like you know, put all the details in there. Now I put in here that you know the things were laying around. It may need new battery. It may be, you know it may have to be charged or you may have to replace the battery in there. But I have to share this with you guys. The way it was packaged and the way it was sent to him, her, who, whatever, <laughs> it doesn't look like anything was taken off. I taped up the battery on there. So everything looks intact. It doesn't even look like the person did anything with it. Now, you might say, well, maybe they did a good job. They, maybe, maybe, you're, you know, maybe you're thinking they, they didn't. But they, because I know how I pack things. And this does not look like it was even touched. The packing label was still on the cover. All right, you could say, well, they maybe left it on there, you know, whatever. But it doesn't look like it was touched. Okay, that's the way I look at it. And there's a thing called buyer remorse. He might have seen one cheaper, or maybe some a friend or a relative gave him one, but he said, hey, listen, you don't need it. And that's how he put it back, defective, not working. Okay, but then again, I don't know. I can't, I can't argue with that with that. I can't, you know get into a mitigation with this buyer and between me and him if he's saying I take his word for it so there's one way I could do this here is I could go out and get a brand new battery with the charger but then if I sell it as a king I have to ante up, ante up the price and here's the gamble if it don't work and I just spent that money alright so you say well you could sell the battery and the charger separate like I could do that too but uh, I've had that happen with one of one, uh, I was a Keurig coffee maker the buyer had purchased it Claimed it did not work. Now, when I sell my Cura coffee makers, I got one more left on there. If you ever see it there, and I'm again, if you're interested in, I do offer best offers on, so you, you're more than welcome. Um, he claimed it didn't work. Oh, I plug it in, it doesn't work. This, that, it's then he's saying all these bad things about it. It's spewing coffee all over the place. I he goes, he's making, he's, he says, he's making all this stuff. He's saying all these bad things about it. And I said, okay, I'm very sorry to hear that. I said, if you look at the video, I tested it. Everything works good. I test everything out. I put stuff on videos, too. And the guy is going off, and he's saying, like, you know, in a messaging, he's saying, yeah, he goes, what? He goes, what, what a mess this thing created. I was like, wow, really? I said, oh, I'm sorry. I got to hear that there. I said, well, please, I'm very sorry for the inconvenience. I said, please send it back. I will issue a full refund. Folks, when I got it back, I tested it out. Everything that person, that buyer said was false. It was false. And I'm being a front honest with you. It was all false. First off, before I put any Keurig coffee makers up there, I sold quite a few of them. Okay, You could even read the, f the feedbacks on them. Check out the people who see the Keurigs. You'll see what they said about them. I sold those there. Before I sell them, I test them out. I make sure they work. And I test them over and over and over again because I want to make sure the first test run, you know, you might say, oh, it looks good. I want to make sure. I, I usually run the water through them maybe about 10 times, 10, 15 times to make sure. The single cup ones, if you put, I got a cup of water over here, okay? If you put 10 of these in here and in, in the single cup things, um, I expect it to come out like that, well, at that level. And I run them over and over again. There was nothing wrong with the machine. It wasn't spewing water all over the place, like he says. He just wanted to send it back. And here's the thing. I wish buyers would do one thing, would be honest, upfront honest. If you're going to send something back because you found a better deal, or you got it from your aunt or your uncle, they gave it to you, maybe they had a whatever, and you want to send it back, just put back... Uh, 
I don't know. Uh, I found one for a cheaper price or whatever. Don't make up lies or, or say things like defective or not working, you know. Because let me tell you something. When you get things like that, especially if you're a person that's, that's quote, unquote, an eBay diehard seller, that will affect your return rate, defective turn, whatever, defective rate, whatever. It does affect it. You know, you'll get so many strikes on it. And then what happens is you get too many returns like that. Uh, because of falsifying the real the real reason why you're sending it back, you're going to get a defect rate. So from a top rate seller plus, it'll drop you down to standard seller. And then if it's any more of that, I think you go above, below or something along that line. So, you know, all I ask the buyers is be upfront and honest. If this guy, if this does work, he could have he could have responded to me and said, hey, listen, you know. Um, you know, I found a better one or I got one cheaper or, you know, and not people I said, well, wait a minute, you're not going to believe. No, I do believe the guy. But, folks, what I'm telling you is it doesn't look like it was the wrapping came off it. It looked like the way I sent it to him is the way I got it back. Buy your remorse. Haven't you ever done it? I've done things like that. Uh, if I bought something in Walmart and I seen it at cheaper, I bought, I bought an item at Walmart and I seen it cheaper, let's say Target, I'm using it as an example, I would return the item and I tell them. And I would tell the Walmart, i say, what's the reason for return? I found it cheaper elsewhere. Plain and simple. Why not? Why, what am I going to do? I'm going to lie? I'm going to sit there and say, well, geez. Yeah. No, I, I tell the truth. I tell it like it is. I've seen it cheaper. I've done that before in the past. And I'm not ashamed to admit it. People do that. They will see things cheaper somewhere else, and they, they'll return it. I've done it. But anyway, enough with that. I'm just throwing it out there. I don't want to keep expanding too much on this topic. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about is, um, well, I talk, we covered the topic with the eBay seller and the PayPal thing, so we got that out of the way. The other thing I want to talk about is trends. Now, folks, as you know, what's going on with the um, with the protesting going on and stuff like that? There, I'm not going to get I'm not going to get too into that. There, I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, that's not what this video part of this video is all about. <laughs> Um, it, this is eBay related. I had a relative come over the other day. Uh, actually, last night, actually, the other day. Well, yeah, yesterday. Was talking to me about the things that people are going to be putting up on eBay. Um, one of them was, I don't know if you guys heard, uh, that Cops, the movie Cops, has been taken off. Taken, they're removing out the series. They're taking it off. Um, that... People may want to go out and buy cops. There's, you know, the, remember the, you know, the show cops, bad boys, bad boys. What are you going to do? You know that thing. You might have seen it on there. Um, was told you may want to go out and look for those there because people are going to probably want to buy them now because the show is no more going. It's not going to be on anymore. From what I understand, and you know, they tell me, well, you might want to, you go to thrift store, you might be on the lookout for that. And I'm going to explain as to why I'm not too keen on that stuff. And the other one was with Gone with the Wind, that movie. I think it is self-explanatory what it talks about. I'm not going to get into it. I am not going to get into any little, you know, disputes or talk about different things. This is strictly about eBay, and that's how we're going to leave it at eBay. The point I'm talking about is, the point I'm trying to get across is with the trends. You'll hear people saying, just like a relative, those videos, if you can get them, are going to probably be worth money on eBay. Now, there's a story that came out uh, back in 2016, and I'm gonna I'll, I'll play. I can even play, I'm gonna play the clip for you, where somebody on eBay was selling uh, a, a brand new sealed 19. The video came out in 1992 as a VHS, The Beauty and the Beast. Now, if you don't believe me. You're going to hear from eBay Radio. You're going to hear Griff talking about it. He even gives out the number, uh, the item number. And if you type it in, it's from 2016. You're not going to see it. So you could, you, could, you could copy it down or try it. You're not going to get anything. According to eBay Radio, um, two, I think, two sold. The selling price was 30 grand. People have money, and I'm going to show you. Even today, even today, folks, people are still putting those 
VHS is up for decent prices. Some are hundreds, some are a little cheaper than that, of course. Then there's some that are selling for thousands. Well, lo and behold, when I heard that story, because I listen to eBay radio religiously, what do I do? I remember the day before I heard that, because they come on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I remember when I went to my local thrift store, and I seen a couple of Beauty and the Beast there. They were really good condition, and some of them were black diamonds. That's another thing, too. This one was a black diamond. And supposedly, the black diamond VHS is supposed to be, I don't know, the people look for them, whatever. I don't know. They, they're more, more, worth more money. Who knows? I don't know. Okay, I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. I'm telling you what I read, what I hear. So what do I do? I'm listening to eBay radio that day. Griff comes on, talks about it. What do I do? Right in the middle of the show, I power it off, get in my car, drive over to the thrift store, which is, thank God, it's only 15 minutes away. If it was like an hour or two hours away, forget about it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even waste my time. I go down there. And I said, oh, I remember where I had them. I, you know, not stashed, I didn't stash them, but I remember where I seen them. And I went to the VHS section, and I picked up two Beauty and the Beast. Now, I normally don't tell you what I pay for these things, but because I, I think it's kind of relevant, but some people like to hear it. They go for, I don't know, I think a buck fifty, And if you get them at half price, it's 75 cents, something on that line. It happened to be a half day price, too, a half day. So I think it was a dollar fifty, and I got it for seventy five. I got both of them for a dollar uh, seventy five cents. So a dollar fifty for a dollar fifty, I got two. What do I do? Come home, snap pictures, take the case out, look at it. Well, first I check them in there, make sure they weren't cracked or anything. You know, good jewel cases. Whatever. Take the pictures of you know of them. Uh, right in the description up there. I put them up on eBay. I put one up, the the really good one. There was two of them, but the one that was really good looked really pristine, like like almost brand new condition. I put it up for fifteen hundred dollars. I said, wait a minute. And the other one, I, I, did, I didn't list the other one. I just took pictures of the other one. I said, wait a minute. And then I'm looking. Because you know when, you do, you, when you're doing comps, you do, you do research. And you're looking on there and you say, well, let me see what others are selling for. And there were people that are selling brand new ones like that. $19.99, $9.99. I said, am I crazy? Am I going to join the bandwagon here? <laughs> am I going to get on a good deal? So what I did was I said, this is insanity. I went in there, went to the listing, revised it. I put it for nine ninety nine. I think it sell. I don't know. Someone gave me an offer for seven dollars or six ninety nine or whatever. I took it. The other one I think sold for like five bucks, whatever it was. I didn't fall into that trap. Okay, and I and I and I just want to tell people with trends. You know, well, my relative was telling me, I understand that something becomes a scarcity or it's not going to be around anymore. The cat's out of the bag. He already told me this is these are the items that are selling on eBay and they're selling for a good dollar. So the cat's out of the bag. It's not like you you came across. You know, people who are you know uh, on top of these things act on impulse. It's like, did you hear about this here? Now I heard about that, but I didn't even thought about it. And the thing I try to say is. If you look up those videos, I didn't look them up. I didn't do the research on that because I really don't have an interest. I'm just trying to share some information. With you. You're going to probably see people selling them, maybe, maybe, for ridiculous prices. Or maybe some people might sell them for really cheap prices. It's like that old saying there, as I learned in economics, where once the law of supply and demand is met, everything comes down. So I've done things like that. I, I, there was another occasion I did stuff like that. They were retail arbitrage. I bought something I think at Walmart was on a discounted price. And I'll be honest with you, I don't remember what it was. All I do remember is that what I paid for it is what I sold it for. <laughs> I'm being up front and honest. That's why I don't do it anymore. That's why I don't do it anymore. Um, so I'm going to take you today. I'm going to let you listen to the clip. I want you because I want you to hear it. it's come out. It's, it's come out of eBay Radio's mouth, not mine. I'm just sharing this information with you. I just don't want to see people. And it's not because, like, well, you know, I'm trying to, you know, uh, paint the bleak picture. If you guys want to go out and, and get those items, go for it. I'm not. I have no interest in it because I know what the outcome is going to be. I did it before, and I'm not going to do it again. Um, you know, unless you got something specifically, you got to like something that's really out of this world. You're just another number on eBay, folks. And the last time I did, a, you know, I did a research on how many active sellers are on eBay, I think it was 25 million sellers, active sellers on eBay. So it's already out there. 
And you could check it out for yourself. I didn't do the research. Apparently he did. He said, oh, yeah, he goes, yeah, this and it's all for good price. Well, okay. You may, you may do that. It may, you know. All I'm saying, though, is if you come, you come, you, let's say you come across those things in a thrift store, if you're getting it for a really good, decent price, a cheap price, maybe a half off, like my thrift stores have like half off, 50% off, and let's say you come across a DVD set of those cops or whatever, the Gone with the Wind, and you're getting it for like a buck or whatever it is, $2, and you put it up. I always have to start things off. If, my, if you look at the price range of my stuff, it's $19.99, $9.99, $7.99, items like that there, and you say, well, I'll make a few bucks off it. That's different. But if you're going to go in there with great expectations, saying, no, I'm going to get this tape here, these, these five volume set, whatever, and I'm going to sell for two, you may get it. You may get it. Like I said, there's about 25 million sellers on eBay. So they may have something there. They may, you know, you might find something that something special about that buyer. Maybe you just like what he has. Maybe it's a better, whatever. I don't know. Maybe he's over with free shipping. Maybe he's going to give you a, uh, an incentive pat prize. You know, that thing to go with it. I don't know. I don't know what's going to spark you to buy that item. But for the simple reason is I am not going to do that. I did already. It didn't work. Um, thank God I didn't make a big investment. But uh, I'm talking about the Beauty and Beasts of VHS tape. But I'm going to play that clip for you. And I want to also show you with voice marketing radio, folks, it's no longer, you know, active as far as like, you know, they're not doing the show anymore. The lady did a host who, who uh, I think owns voice marketing, you know, website, whatever. It was really nice they had the archives there. You could still play them. And they're really good shows. If you, I'm going to take you there. But if you got the time, I know it's a lot. To, to you know check into but if you get a chance check it out voice marketing and it's all about ebay by the way it's not like you know they're going off into different things there it's it's all about ebay you can learn a lot from them now there's a lot of segments there don't forget now i'm talking from 26 I'm, i think it even goes further back than that uh i'm looking at i was looking at this and let me tell you something i wasn't sure i was even going to find that clip but I said, you know what? For my viewers, and if you're visiting for the first time, I said, I gotta, I gotta share this with them. And you know, it took me quite some time to do this here, folks. But I don't mind going to bat for you guys to share this information. The whole purpose of my YouTube channel is to help inspire and share. It's is when I get information handed down to me through Google Alerts, whatever, and I feel it's viable information and it may be of help to you. I'm gonna put it out there, and that's why I can never say it enough that if you are interested in e-commerce or selling subscribe to my channel because I do put out pretty good content good clean content too okay on my on my YouTube channel on this channel I do not discuss religion and politics and there's no profanity whatsoever leaving out the leaving with those three does it make my channel better than anybody else's absolutely absolutely positively not does not make my channel better anybody's. But the only thing, what I do, what, what by me putting that out there is to let you guys know is, on this channel, as long as I'm sitting behind this HP webcam, I will not be discussing religion and politics. And no profanity. <laughs> There's no reason to, to pepper a conversation with the F-bomb. I've been on sites like that and I heard them and I don't like, I don't care for that language. Okay, that's me. Okay. Uh, it's not like I never heard it before. I don't like it. This is I consider my YouTube channel a kid safe channel. Meaning, if you're a mother or a father and you're in your den or your kitchen, or your living room, you, you, you come across my YouTube channel, you don't have to worry about telling your kids, ushering them into another room, say, kids, go in your room because I'm watching this guy here. I don't know what's going to come out of his mouth. You're not going to hear anything like that come out of my mouth. I can tell you right to boot. That's not going to happen. So you don't have to worry about that. All right. Just want to throw that out there. Just to let you guys know where you, where I'm coming from. All right. Now I'm going to take you to the. Uh, I'm going to bump out of the screen. I'm going to take you over to the uh, voice marketing. I'm going to have to mute my mic, and I'm going to play that clip. It's advanced. I advanced it, but you can listen to the whole thing. I'm not going to play the whole thing because you know. Um, I have to advance it to 15. You know, 15, 15 minutes and 40 seconds. And you can listen to what Grip talks about. And when I first heard it, this is the this is the video. This is the uh, yeah. This is the uh, the uh, the voice marketing radio episode that I heard, and this is the one that caused me to shut my computer off and go to the thrift store. 
So let's go there right now. I'm going to put my glass on here because I can't see this stuff that good. By the way, if you wonder what this is here, this is my little, uh, actually, it was given to me. It's my Blue Yeti mic. Love it. I got it. My, my, my brother gave it to me. He said, you want it? And I said, yeah, I'll take it. And I go, these things go for a nice buck. I'll show you what it looks like really quick here. This is it. Okay. And, uh, when, when he came over and he put it on the table, he said, I go, and I looked at it, and I said, he, he gave me some stuff to sell. And I was like, no. I go, yeah. And the stuff, I wasn't really, not that I was being mean. I wasn't really interested in the stuff that he was talking about. I wanted to, I was interested in this because I was like, oh, I always wanted one of these things. And, you know, being a, a frugal entrepreneur like myself, I would eventually got one cheaper. You know, I would have seen, I would have shopped around. And, but I always wanted one of these here. I've always seen a lot of a lot of uh, YouTube guys that have these here that have channels and you when know, they do their whatever documentaries or whatever it may be to talk about. A lot of them have this here. A majority, well, the ones I follow. I'm not saying you know the whole all YouTube uh, creators have, but a majority of people I follow they have these here. And I was like, and this is the one I always wanted too. I like this up the, uh, I like the, the the contrast of it. I love it. But anyway. Um, and that's why you see this little thing here, in case you're wondering. That's my little blue, blue Yeti mic. All right. Let me go over here. Uh, do this live. Let's see here. I got a lot of windows opened up here. Um, let me close this one out. We don't need that one. Uh, we don't need that window. Um, we'll leave that one open there. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry if I'm driving you crazy. Oh, let me see. All right. That's my listings there. Okay. Well... Um, all right, while you're here, I'll, I'll just show you really quick. <laughs> um, these are things I have right now up there. And I, I'm sorry. I just, I'm not trying to leave as a segue, but I just want to share this with you guys really quick. If you guys do see anything, I might as well show you. I have a total of, what, 114, 117 items, whatever. Um, if you see anything you like here, folks, men and women, um, please make a best offer. I haven't been set them. Keep them reasonable. Like I said, again, I'm not a high-volume seller, as you can see. I don't have a lot. There, are I've been on sites where people have thousands of these things. And, uh, you know, this is what I have to offer right now. And uh, I don't have that many. Like I said, I'm a small-volume seller. But uh, if you do see things here, don't let the prices scare you. All right? Um, please, uh, take advantage of it. I'm trying to unload. You know, I, I just want to share this real quick. I am not buying any more stuff right now. I am not really. I'm not putting any stuff right now at this point in time. I haven't even been to the thrift stores now. The thrift stores did open up around me, but uh, I have not gone to them any, uh, you know, at any, you know, any time soon because for the simple reason is I want to unload this stuff. I don't want to keep buying stuff and keep adding to it and nothing selling. So um, if you guys see anything, some things might require local pickups, as you can see. Some of them, well, the big stuff is, um, you know, make the best stuff and keep it reasonable. I am trying to make a little profit, you know, but. Um, yeah, definitely check it out and uh, read the feedbacks. I always tell people, read the feedbacks. As a matter of fact, that's all I have, right? That's it. Yeah, this is it. That's the bottom of the page, folks. All right, so let's bump out of that one here. And let's now, here's the thing I want to show you really quick before we get to the, uh, <clears throat> the radio, that radio clip. You see here, folks? Now, I typed in here. Well, that's why I was looking up there for one that sold for $30,000. That's why I had to do it in Google search. But if you look at some of these here, okay? They are still on eBay. Now, maybe not this one here. Let me bump out of this screen here. I think it's this one. See here, folks? Beauty and the Beast Black Diamond Edition. Now, you might say, well, you put it up in Google. This must be old stuff, old information. No. These are actually, folks, look. Look at that. Now, this is insanity, okay? <laughs> look. $500,000. 500, this has got to be a joke. Okay, let's click it on. They might say, yeah, but that's old. That might have been like 10 years ago. No, watch. I'll click it on. <laughs> this is it. Look. Look. Good through June 18th through Saturday, June 27th. Look at the price. Okay. I'm not going to even bother watching it because I, look at this one, 450 I'm waiting to see one for a million. Uh, don't be surprised that we don't be <laughs> you see what I'm talking about folks these are active, and these are people still still d d selling this stuff okay I don't know I, I anyway that that's what's going on these these are what you're seeing here folks are active listings yeah 
They are active listings. Look at this. Okay. 35, 99, 399. Okay. All right. It's a little different than the cover, than the cover one. But I mean, look at this. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Now, if you want to experiment and you want to try it for yourself, you might want to pick one up. I'm not. Been there and done that. Just wanted to share that with you guys. All right. Here's the clip right here. I'm going to mute my mic, and I'm going to play this clip for you. I'm not going to play the whole thing, of course, so don't worry. Don't get turned over. Say, oh my God, he's going to play a 20-minute clip. No, I'm not. I'm going to play a little of it, let you hear what Griff is talking about to Lee Maribol. And uh, you let me know what you think. You can drop a comment below. Okay. I'm going to mute my mic. Here we go. Oh, you do? Oh, I want to talk about... A Go bolo. Ahead. A bolo. Oh, good. Go for it. So uh, I'm going to give you an item number. And this is something that uh, is currently up for sale, and a few of the two have sold. So you do the math. 231-964-231-572. Again, that item number is 231-964-231. 572. Okay, I'm going to go there right now. So you may be in a store. You may be in a Savers or Goodwill or a, a state sale. You may see this. It may be a dollar, maybe ten dollars, maybe a hundred bucks, but you're going to buy <gasps> it. Oh my God. Yep. Want to tell them what it is? Babe? It is a sealed, rare Beauty and the Beast. 1992 VHS Walt Disney Classic Black Diamond. It's a VHS tape. That's right. Brand new is the item condition. Right. And they had three of them. Griff, tell them what the price is. Buy it 30, now. 30000 No bot. No make an offer. And two have sold for $30,000. Oh, my. So, so for some people, that's a fat year's salary. Beauty and the Beast. Now, you always look for VHS Black Diamond. That's the series. This particular one usually is not sealed, and it sells for half that normally, for about around 14000 15000 But because these are sealed, this guy got double the going rate for two of them, and he still has one left. Same guy? Yeah, he's, he had three. <laughs> he oh. had three, and he sold two. And I think he may have sold two to the only collectors in America. So maybe that, that you know, third one will sit there for a while. It's things like this that make me feel terrible that sometimes I maybe through. Okay, you can listen to the rest of this here. <clears throat> I'm not going to keep playing the whole thing because, you know, uh, I don't want to bore you guys. Um, I'm going to drop this link below. You can listen to the whole thing. Now, bear in mind. Bear in mind, this came out September 2016, September 29, 2016. Okay, this didn't just happen today, yesterday. This is from September 29, 2016. It's the Ask Gree and Lee show, uh, Lee show, show 431, segment one. Okay, now, uh, if you get a chance, if you want to know a little more about the different shows, now, this one here is eBay Radio. If you click on eBay Radio, really quick, this is where you want to go. The voice marketing radio.com whatever um, I'll drop the link for that as well when you click on see here where my mouse cursor is if you click on eBay radio it's going to bring you specifically to all the broadcast on eBay radio and there you could listen to the segments one two three I don't know how many they got but you could listen to them you may want to read a little into it Catch the topics that, you know, you know the, the things that, that hold your interest or whatever may be of interest to you you could play it you can still play it. As you can see, I played that last one. Some of the things are still active on here, even though voice marketing radio uh, is no longer, in, you know, they're not doing it, as far as I know, unless there's something that changed. Um, <clears throat> you could see when it started here, I think the last showing, or the last year was 2018. So it started 2003 to 2018. All right. Uh, it says, we are please enjoy our archive broadcasts and seller resources. Good information. Now, Going back, let's go. Let's pivot back here for a second. Now there's, uh, I guess, 716 of these here, 
And with this one here, I believe on Ask, Green, uh, Ask, Ask Griff and Lee, it's 485 shows. So what you want to do is to play it as, you would click on Ask, Green, uh, Ask Griff and Lee, and it'll take you to segment one. But there are a lot of these here, okay? These are all archived, okay? But the reason I'm saying this here, now you'll be in the Ask, Green, uh, Ask Griff and Lee I keep getting tongue twisted that. Ask Griffin Lee. Uh, the show. Look at this here. It brought you to 2018, though. See? But if you keep going back when you go down here, you could listen to the archives. Really good show. I listened to them religiously. They used to come out Tuesdays and Thursdays right over here. See? Right here, folks. Live broadcast. No more. Now, remember, it's this, this is no longer. Uh, Tuesday, uh, yeah, from 11 a.m. Pacific time to 2 p.m. So, uh... New York time, which I'm in New York, I used to listen from 2 o'clock, okay? And then the same thing with this one here. And Thursday, they had Ask Griffin Lee, all right? And that was 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., all right? Uh, that was back then. No more. If you click on Listen Live, uh, let's see what happens here. It should probably bring you to the eBay podcast, I would think. Let's see. Yep. It brings you to the eBay for Business podcast, okay? And this is really good to listen to, too. Um, I talk about this in my other videos. This is the new stuff. This is here, June 9, 2020. This is the latest stuff. They, these shows come out. They're about, well, this one looks like it's 48 minutes. So I was telling people it used to be 30 minutes. Wow. But maybe I've been wrong. Okay. All right. I always thought there were 30 minute segments here. That's what it looks like. Well, I guess not. <laughs> oh, maybe I misunderstood. All right. Well, anyway, um, yeah, you check this out if you get a chance. I, I listen to these in the background while I'm doing my research. And prepping for the uh, my eBay, you know, uh, eBay news, I listen to it in the background. I know people say, "How can you listen to it and be, you know, don't you get distracted?" Well, I don't know. I could do it though. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, check it out if you get a chance. But again, um, if you want to check these shows out, like I said, just do that there. You can go back and just uh, go to Voice Market. I'll give you. I'll I'll drop the clip in here. The uh, the um, clip. I will drop the uh, URLs to get there. And when you go to the window itself, the main page, you're going to see this play latest shows, search archives, show live listening, seller resources. Um, some some still have active hyperlinks in here, folks, just to let you know that. I don't know if you're aware of that. If I mentioned it, I didn't. If I didn't, I apologize. But some of these do have active hyperlinks. As a matter of fact, um, here's an active hyperlink I picked off of uh, the voice marketing radio right here. If you're a person, and I get nothing for this here, folks. I don't get anything for it. So if you guys, I'm just throwing this out there. Um, you could buy eBay shipping supplies if you choose to do so. I don't. I make my own custom boxes, and I have my own little labels I use. So if you guys are out there that are eBay diehards and you want to buy this stuff, uh, you can go to this site, and you can uh, buy these things if you choose to do so. All right? Like I said, I'm not getting anything from it. All right? Um, and the other thing is over here, uh, if you want to share it really quick, the eBay guaranteed delivery, I was picking that. That was on their site as well. So some of the active hyperlinks do work. They do work on there. Uh, for those who are not familiar with the eBay guaranteed delivery, you might want to look into this here, folks. You know, because uh, it's, it's pretty, the information is pretty current as far as I know. So you might want to check into this as well. All right. And that's a segment that we just listened to. And that's the one you're going to listen to. I will drop the link below for the, um, for the main page, which is this one, and I will drop the link below for this one here in case you just want to listen to that uh, whole story there, okay? All right, so uh, I'm going to go back to my screen here. Well, that concludes this video. I hope you found the information helpful, and if you did, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share, and if you want to be updated to when I post out new videos, please hit that bell notification icon. You're watching Let's Talk eBay. My name is Rich Bassini. Today is June 12, 2020. I'm wishing you all the best in sales. Until next time, bye-bye for now.